What's up, everybody? We are here for another episode of the Masters of Sport podcast, and I'm here with my co-author of Parabolic Periodization and the Sports Performance Bible, Earl Kunkel. Earl. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Um, life's good, you know? <laughs> yeah, I do know. I have a great life, too. You know, I know you have four kids. I have three. It is wonderful being a dad. <laughs> You're gonna have like a grandkid soon. No, no, no. Let's not push that. <laughs> Let's not do that. I do have a daughter who's Earl had a kid older. when he was like thirteen. I wasn't that young. <laughs> but yeah, I was a teenager. Oh You know, well. I, I you know, Caitlin I said to Caitlin last night, I think I finally figured out what, what's gonna make me happy in life. Yeah. All right. What? <laughs> She's like, There's no way you know what's gonna make you happy. Yeah, and I was and I was like, okay. I always know. I've always known. Like, I I actually, I want to make a lot of money. So that I can build a place because all I ever think about is training, uh -huh. and I never want to be inhibited by finances. Gotcha. And one thing that bothers me is if I can't do something with like a training thought in my mind. If I can't do it because I, I can't afford it or I can't I can't have that. You don't have access. To then it. I get like I feel guilty and I feel pathetic. Oh my goodness! And so I want go capitalism. Keep beating up Dane. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I want to have, I want to be financially successful enough so that we can build a place that I, that I can do whatever I want with my athletes training wise. Like this is what we're going to do and this is how it's going to be done. And, and it's, you know, you want like the Russian complex in Rocky four. Yeah. But yeah. with me, with you and with me and like more, instead of needles, we have like protein shakes. Yeah. And not like the log through the snow and mm -hmm. just tough, like old school garage strength back when it was like, no, I want the combo, the barn. Okay. We'll see my, the barn mindset with the, with, with the Russian. Yeah, with the yeah. facilities. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep. I, I can dig that. I yeah. can definitely I mean, there is it. a benefit to having nice stuff. Yeah. There's also a benefit to having not nice stuff. Right. You might. You're a little bit more focused, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Maybe a chip, too, on your shoulder a little bit. Go yeah. get it. Constantly. Always. Man. Always having a chip. We're off script a little bit. We were going to talk about how legit people are starting to uh, comment on... The content that is being put out. Um, <laughs> What's how do you, can you define legit? What does that mean? Like people who compete in realms of fitness, okay, like weightlifting, CrossFit, powerlifting, yeah. like power-based sports too, and some endurance ones, right? And they're like I would say nationally and internationally known. Some of them, yep, successful in their sort of what they pursue as an athlete. And they're starting to speak to you. Yeah. Like, and I guess maybe they end up. That's DMing. because they know how cool I am. You are cool. I, I do think you're cool. They, they really want to be my friend. That's all I want. You want to be their friend probably more than yeah. that. <laughs> well, I just want them to like me. But they're commenting on your reaction videos. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fun. I don't, I shouldn't say I think it's funny. I think it's an opportunity. Yeah. For them and for you too. Yeah, I think I think I and by mean, you I mean garage strength. Right. I I think when I when I see that now it's like uh and dude it's it's actually like that. It's crazy cuz um you know when when I first did the podcast with Christian Tibado, one it was like he just went out on a whim. He's like, "You know what? I know Hugo Barrett uh used to train at, at Garage Strength and he worked with Hugo and he's Olympian." So it was like, "All right, well, I'll I'll do this podcast with him." But that was the first time, really, that I was like, "Oh my gosh, this dude's gonna, this yeah. dude's gonna do it." And and you know when I when Meadows met with me, that was similar feeling. Now it's like Christian comments and DMs me with studies, and we talk more frequently. Right, right. So it's cool because it's like it's fostering a positive relationship, and and we yeah. share thoughts. And I think that. It's interesting because we have a lot of subscribers on it's on YouTube. I mean, but not a ton, you know. Well, compared to like top YouTubers, Mark yes. Rober has twenty three million subscribers. Yeah, yeah. Like, 
Now he's doing phenomenal stuff with science. So it's like, you know, Jeff Nippert in our space is three million. You know, yeah, it's like no. we're a fraction of him. Right. So I I sit there and if we can keep impacting people, it, it could really open up some cool doors, I think. Yeah, no. I remember too uh your Thibodeau one watching that because I I get to see the raw footage yeah, of yeah, like yeah. everything. Yeah. And listening to that. And I remember his uh talking about the tractor trailer and the Porsche. Yeah. I, I and that sticks with me all the time. He's yep. like, you don't train a tractor trailer like it's gonna be a Porsche when it comes right. to like your sticking point. And he's like, same thing. You treat a Porsche like a Porsche, like you go fast through that mud yeah. that sticking point. Yeah, yeah. And like it was just so clear and it was so like spot on. And it made me think of like that uh how Einstein says, the simpler you can explain it, the more the knowledgeable better. you are. Yeah. Like yeah. you, the more complicated you get about it, like you're probably trying to hide something a it's little bit. It's easier to make it relatable too. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what, I think that's the key. Actually, I think that's what makes YouTube cool is that you have time to develop that skill of making things easier to understand. Dude. And I also think too, I always say this, I, Dr. B did a really good job with that. Like he was, even though he couldn't speak English that well, he could explain things uh, for for someone who was, you know, I I don't like to say dumber, but like I always think I always think of myself uh, out of my my brother and my sister and me, the three yeah. of us. I'm the dumb one. Like my brother was You're an the aerospace. youngest though too, right? Yeah, my brother was an aerospace engineer. You know, my sisters testified in front of Congress like. 12 times something absurd like both of them were spelling bee champions like i didn't even get out of the first <laughs> round of spelling bee like they you know they both scored higher on the sats in seventh grade than i did as a, as a senior in high school <laughs> so i i think when in the, the reason why i'm saying that is like like if for me it was relatable for someone like dr b and thibodeau does this too where it's like they make it easy to understand the right. complex com uh concepts which then makes it better to relate and, and impact a greater exactly. realm of people. Yeah, it's not like you don't always need to be the first. You need the best to be the best at it. Yeah, to a degree too. And yeah. how you like you deliver the content. I I think almost too like when we would talk about like when we were doing the Bosch stuff reading. Like yeah. sometimes it was just like this is tough. Like let's reread it. Let's yeah, figure yeah. it out. Let's and talk it talk out. through. Yeah, and and it's not like it's impossible. It's just it's not as easy as like yo go fast because you're fast. Right. Like. And it makes sense. And if you think about it, the, I don't know. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. You agree. But going back to the the com pop, popular people. Yeah. Well, commenting. successful people, yes. too. Like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're legit. Um, it makes me happy that, that they're thinking, that they're thinking about what I have to say. So, And the thing is, these people might have a broader, a greater reach than I have. And I think that that's, that's the ultimate thing that we have to think about is, is – the whole goal of everything that we're trying to do here at, at GS is reach as many people as possible and impact their sports performance as as well as we possibly can. Right. You know, get somebody who, instead of being, you know, uh, a bench warmer at, at the varsity level, they become a starter or get a starter to be a D3 athlete. Or maybe they, instead of being a D3 athlete, now they're a Division One athlete. It's like impacting those people to rate to rise up and that is our ultimate goal and i think like somebody who does comment and they have a greater reach than us and we we have a good communication together well now they can reach people yeah. too and you can help them too like yeah it's not like just because your reach isn't as large at the moment still doesn't mean the information and the content isn't going to help them yeah yeah, yeah. and <clears throat> which is completely awesome too right yeah. like that shows a lot on their part being like, yo, there's probably something here that hasn't been tapped yet. Why don't I start tapping it yep. to see if that gives me the edge I need? And that's part of, too, when I say these people are successful, like they're looking for the tiniest edge to, to get. Yeah, to, to get. That's very true. I mean, even Matt Frazier talks about that. Yeah, we, he had the in his book, he talked about doing a burpee. Jumping up to like a bar, yeah, like a six inch thing. Yeah, like, and he was right. talking about instead of hitting over top. I hit underneath, and if I hit underneath the bar, it pushes you back down. It like pushes it like I can get force, back yeah. down, and it might only be a third of a second, but there's a hundred reps we have well, to do. That's five seconds over a hundred. So this is silly. This is one of my gripes with CrossFit, and 
I don't think they need weight classes, but I do think they need height classes. Yeah, and I, I say this very silly because they're, they talk – their brand is like most work, fastest done over this amount of time. Yeah. If I'm picking a dumbbell up from the floor to overhead and I'm 6'1 and my arm reach – yeah. is three inches, five inches you got more Frazier's than five, that five seven. seven. Yeah, I'm doing more work. Right, that's true. So by definition, yeah, you're you're kind of like your sport is counter to your sort of hypothesis. Your mantra. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, there's a little, I don't want to say phoniness. I'm not saying these people aren't fit as can yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that they they deserve all their accolades. I'm just, don't get offended. Yeah. However. <laughs> There's that like little thing there, or like when they did that one study where the one lane was faster than everyone else, right? And they're like, "Oh, there's no reason for that." Well, of course there was something up with the yeah. the equipment, the yeah. court, the field, whatever the sun was hitting. The like, yeah, the mondo made it a little springier, yeah. whatever. Just acknowledge D- it, yeah. like yes. Anyway, that was my silliness there. <laughs> like, you know, give people some credit. Like, yeah. They're doing work. It's the same reason with people with long legs. It's harder to squat. You have to work harder. So really, when I'm squatting, I'm squatting harder than you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> and it's like people with long legs, why they walk so fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Less strides over time. It's like, funny because, dude, we'll, we'll be going through the airport with Haley, and I'll be like, dude, how do you walk so slow? Yeah. Like, how are you walking? Like, I'm literally going, like, half speed, and you're still behind me. And she'll be like... You're a foot taller than me. Like, <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Do you know how many strides I have to have? No. Nah, All right. So one thing that I noticed that you do that I feel is pretty simple, and I always think of this as the order of operations, and I think back to, like, math for me. So when I was in grade school, the school I was at, they would make us do – I remember this in fifth grade because I hated it. You went to Jim Thorpe? What? You went to Jim Thorpe? Sure. We'll say so. <laughs> um, One of the freakiest athletes I mean, yes, of all time. he was, yeah. but that was his own accolades. Yeah, not your schools. <laughs> yeah, no. And this is like grade school stuff, too. Yeah, okay. Um, they ended up, I'm going to say it, I ended up having to do like 25 math problems a night. Okay. So here I am. I think I'm pretty good at math. And as an adult, like I always thought math was just something I was good at. But as an adult, I can realize I had to do 25 or 30 problems a night, four or five nights a week. Right. For years. To get It's a skill. Yeah. Like no wonder I got good at it. Right. <laughs> like right. I was doing it so often. And like my parents were like, do your homework. And I like listened to it's my just parents. just a procedure that you. Yeah. Anyway, I remember in middle school. So it reminds me of my technical analysis, actually, when I do technical analysis for throwing. Yeah. It's like I do so many of them. I, anyway, sorry. You're you go good go. at it. Yeah, you go. I'm in middle school, and they start teaching me about this order of operations thing, right? Like you do what's inside the parentheses first. You multiply and divide first. Yeah, there's like the, the proper way. There's a way to do it. And Sports Performance Bible, we talk about this. There's yes. a proper way. To order your exercises. Yeah. And I know your your favorite movements, your weightlifting movements, your snatch, your clean, your jerk, yeah. and all the variations, or as you like to say, your technical coordination movements yeah. are always done first. Why is the order of operations? Why do we start there? Uh, I think it's important to know it's like the the I believe the most complex thing needs to be done first. So something that requires the most mental focus, the most um, rapid amount of coordination um, in all aspects. You know, you're coordinating everything inside of your body to to move something, to move an opposing force. You want as minimal neuromuscular fatigue as possible. So doing some so when you're doing something complex, that's why I like to do it first. Typically, you know, sometimes I will uh, call this, and this is from Pierre Wa, not the ice hockey uh, Hall of Fame goalie, but actually a weightlifting coach from Canada. Um, he would call it the double, where sometimes we will come back at the end of a of a workout and do like a snatch again, if if we're talking about weightlifting, not not sports, but. <clears throat> that order of operations is is mainly because it's the hardest thing to do um and it also if it's done first can have a positive impact on the next movement 
and if you switch it, it's not always the case in that regard. So, gotcha, gotcha. Now, when you say it's the most complicated, I immediately started thinking. Well, reflexive movements are pretty complicated. Why? But the load's lighter. Okay. Th- well. Yeah. Yeah. That's so what it's like. I if figured. you have a reflexive movement, it's complicated, but it might only take you two to three sets to. F- to figure it out because the load's easier to deal with. Yeah. And once your body wakes up in those positions, you can handle it. Do you feel then with your Dublé thing that talking about, does that work then in tandem with the reflexive movements? Like if you did one... Like if you started with your technical coordination movement, like, hey, we're going to clean from two blocks. That's yep. the first thing we do. We won't reveal the other two, the rest of the order of operations yeah, yeah. yet. But we Dublé it back to a technical coordination mindset by doing the reflexive movement at the at end. The end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah, I know you do this already because yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, but no, now I feel I like, like there's that. actual a label I could put to it that I like in my mind of what I just learned now from you about the Dublé. Yeah, stuff. because it's a, it's it's just like that means of coordinating their skills that your body has to learn, and if it's just like math, like it's those are all skills that 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 your brain starts to sequence everything. I think that's the most important. Uh, aspect is that our our brains and our bodies love sequences yes so if we can go through a sequential process over and over it even impacts how you recover like dude there's so much information on undulating periodization and and this is getting a little metaphysical but you watch somebody jump, okay? They follow a parabola. Yeah. Anything that's impacted, you throw something, and it follows a parabola. And I believe that that parabola yeah. also comes back in uh, physiology and that as humans, we like to adapt to that style of stimulus following the proper sequences yeah anyone out there who's uh into memes go ahead like you ever see the fibonacci sequence memes they make yeah yeah do a parabola one for dane put it, <laughs> put it on the the, the reddit comment it somewhere mason. <laughs> yeah mason will love it <laughs> all right cool so we start with the technical coordination we we talked about duble and the reflexive at the end yeah the next order of operation i know is the absolute strength stuff how you typically what you do so a Big movements, single leg squats, back squats, front squats, pulls if you actually let your athletes ever do them. No. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the weightlifters. Uh, so let's talk about absolute strength movements. And yeah. why does it, like, why is it there? Okay. So, again, I wanted to just echo Earl. It would be uh, bench press, incline bench dips, pull ups, uh, rope climbs front squats back squats single leg squats um you know any type of pause squat box squat whatever i like doing them after the coordination one because you can be primed from the the weightlifting movement but then two you're you're like in all aspects your mobility is a little better you're a little bit more rigid uh when you're in the hole um you're a little bit more focused and, and then it's like, all right, now it's a simple movement. It's literally just, you know, squat down, squat up. It's not, you're not doing a, a complex movement. So the, the output here, it's basically like now we can go for broke and push this and build this massive engine, like this massive motor that if we, if we get this, I, I actually like to think about it as if you can think about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is getting the muscle bigger. Okay. So the absolute strength in essence is like building this bigger organism and the coordination movements execute that power, that powerful They fill up the frame, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and and give it all the juice. put more pistons in there type of thing, start pumping it. Yeah, so it's like I like doing that second because – it becomes becomes a simple task and it's it's just – it fits in there really well, and you can essentially um, uh, fatigue your brain as much as possible during that period of training because when you're doing your accessories, it's not as difficult. It's not as challenging. It's not as hard. Uh, and it's also one of those things, too, if I have certain athletes, it's like, hey, you, 
they're explosive as hell. They're really, really explosive and powerful, but their back squats lagging or their single leg squats lagging. We might switch it around if it's a huge, uh, if there's this massive decrement, you know, uh, between the two. And I'm noticing that, but almost always it's going to be second. So that's, I yeah. Mean, I don't know if that helps. Nah, it helps. I know I've seen you. I know the athletes have done absolute strength first and that makes me want to say you kind of answered already you do it because they're lagging like why you'd switch it is there any other instances where you'd be like yo we're going to start with absolute strength and this is why the only time other than that sometimes to be with, with wrestlers if i'm like yo i need you to coordinate when when you're under a lot of fatigue okay uh, you know or if i have a crossfitter actually um <clears throat> crossfitters if if they're on a tent like almost like a 10 minute time you know you got 10 minutes to to work to a max clean and after each attempt you've got to do 10 thrusters they're going to be very fatigued in that 10 right. minute time frame and they still have to execute really well uh and, and that's part of their sport so it's not necessarily something that i would really want to train out of season but as they're starting to peak i actually think that becomes something that you can train because it might be a test that comes up as someone who has dabbled in CrossFit and was very bad at it, it is very hard to lift heavy when your hamstrings are on fire and you're trying to tell your body to get in the proper position to lift. Yeah, and you're just like, your lower back and your hamstrings are going to be lit. Yeah, <clears throat> and you just have to trust mentally you're going to do it even though they feel like horrendous. Right, right. Yeah, and that's the thing too, is it becomes an automatic movement. Yeah. You're just like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it, but I just gotta block this out and deal with the, yeah, the struggle. It, it's rough. <sighs> CrossFit people are pretty amazing yeah. when they do that stuff. Yeah. All right, absolute strength. So we got our technical coordination, kind of brain fatigue almost, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. and it's not necessarily fatiguing it, but it's much harder. It demands more neurologically because you know it's not just down up; it's like up down up. Yeah. A lot of times, and it's not only that, the object's kind of a little bit more emotion, so the opposing force is like coming at you at a much more ballistic type speed. Right. Where with the absolute strength, it's like, hey, you know, we'll slow it down a bit here for you. Right. You know, back that's the other thing, it's the speed. The speed's yeah. easier to manage. Back to my uh, Mario Kart <laughs> one, all of a sudden we're going to go from 200cc and we're going to complain it's too fast, so let's go to the 50cc and, and we can see everything and take in the sights. You know, it's like driving with your grandpa <laughs> on the weekend. Exactly like yeah. that. <clears throat> all right. And then next, what comes in? Do we do we do like trunk work? Do we do plyometrics, or is it accessory it, time? Yeah, you know, I think it depends. I think you know if you're at the end of the week, I I do like to put in. If you're only getting people for like four days, I think or three days, I think you put in a contrast where you do, you do like a, maybe you do some absolute strength work. You rest two to three minutes, and then you do some plyometric work. Um, I like if I'm going to do technical coordination, then absolute strength. It would be, you know, some accessory and trunk work. So um, maybe you're doing overhead walking lunges. You're doing, um, you could be doing overhead sliding caustic squats, uh, and that that could be accessory and trunk work. Um, you could be doing reverse hypers, and and pairing that with some specific type of trunk work. So it. it really depends on the athlete and what their problems are okay but also what's prevalent in their sport as well and and what's necessary like uh javen uh who actually just got an offer today from oregon uh, today and this is like his 30th d1 power five offer you know he's finishing his workout right now with and he's an offensive lineman with a, a skater squat a single leg rdl and then um uh tibialis curls so it's like we're working on his depth and his uh, his power output in a deep position. So skater squats in a unilateral yeah. position. Even though he's a big dude, he can do it because he's he is a very large. Yeah, he's just huge. Kid. He's huge. <laughs> he's big, and so he can handle skater squats. And then and then we're doing you know the 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 RDLs with that. So some some unilateral work again, important for offensive linemen. And then we're we're just doing some targeted work with his. Uh, with his calves because he does have a little bit of issues in his ankle mobility. So 
that that's a good example of how we would set up, you know, and that's his first day of the week. It's his first training day. Gotcha. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So it's like it's like targeting a unilateral or bilateral based off the sport. What what do they need? And then also how much trunk work do they need? And and in theory in reality, you know, uh even even the 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 single leg RDLs are a little bit of trunk work too. Yes. So it's a lot. It's um it's amazing when you do those, how much you feel like through the oblique, even into that. The Especially lat. Especially if you're bracing properly. Yes. And that's the hard part with it is getting the athletes to and not be lazy. One of the funny things is like an old grizzled. I'm not a grizzled man yet. I'm still waiting for my grays to come in so I can be I all salt and good. pepper light. I've been shaving now and then. Anyway, um, since I stopped like Olympic weight or weightlifting, like technical coordination movements constantly every day. Yeah. Now you're a pathetic soul. Not really. We could go for a run and we could see who can walk the next day. <laughs> anyway, um, I could walk, but I couldn't oh even my run. Goodness. I couldn't run the first time. We'll see. What I'd be happens, walking the, the day that we would go running. I have a story about that. Then, <laughs> if we need to, any anyway, first thing I noticed was my arms immediately started getting smaller because I was not supporting the weight overhead daily as often. Yeah, that was like one of the first things. The second thing um, I ended up noticing was my mobility felt harder to do. And the real big one, when I would do accessory movements that felt like easy breezy, I started feeling muscles I didn't know From I was before. using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when I would do a single leg RDL, I'm like, why are my abs acting up so bad right now? Yeah. Whereas before you might not have paid attention. I wouldn't have yeah. noticed it because like my I was co- my body was coordinating was a- so much to do the other movements. Yeah, all that the time. actually makes sense. And that was just eye opening to me. And that's the whole thing too with these movements is it's like you want to get into you want to get if you're in a game use use Javen as an analogy here if he's in a game he does need to brace everything but it needs to be an afterthought his mental capacity needs to be on what's the scheme where's the safeties at because the safeties are essentially going to determine what the linebackers and if they're stunting. So now I can start to read the defense. So my brain has to be so zeroed in on the scheme that I'm playing against that I can't think about bracing in the midst right. of a play. My body has to do that without me thinking about it. And that's where a lot of people they they if they want to they want to talk about they don't like doing weightlifting movements. It takes too long. Blah blah blah. It's like, dude, you're missing the big picture here you're missing a lot of the picture yeah i taught a six-year-old how to do the weightlifting dude there's guys that are making freaking 750 g's a year that will tell you they will say we're gonna do triphasic work and we're not gonna do any any lifting because it's too hard to teach power five athletes how to do weightlifting. d1 athletes can't learn how to do this yeah i think it's not so much they can't learn they're immobile they're not mobile enough to do it and they feel Mm -hmm. pathetic and yeah. their coaches aren't good at teaching him. Yeah, it's not that hard. Yeah. Anyway. Right. All right. You had me thinking of something with this order of operations, too, how you almost want it to become automatic. Does it play into the part that you're starting to do these, like, your accessory movements at the end where you're kind of, like, mentally cashed out, if you will, and you're so fatigued that now the body just has to start doing that? more like coordinating those muscles yeah, or being aware I, I of those think, muscles? I think the only other the only other time I you know I was trying to run through uh something that would be sort of op, uh, opposing what I'm saying and that would be like if I if I use pre or post fatigue so pre fatigue would be like if I would do a bicep curl and then go do a, a chin up a curl up or if I would do uh a tricep push down and then dips but typically, it would be the opposite way. And, and, and in our case, what, what I normally would do is like, yeah, the accessories would be done after because it's like your body should be firing as well. It should be recruiting the way we right. need to recruit. There at the point. Especially if you're eight, especially if, if you're, if you've eat, if you have enough energy um, nutritionally pre-workout, you know, and maybe you consume something during the training session to help with that. It, it does help sometimes. Right. All right. Nice. Do you find, too, that you put that stuff, like, because I know with your accessories, like bodybuilding movements, the DTC, how does that then, like, go towards, like, the mobility, 
the joint stability and things of that nature too. How does that help prevent injuries and everything like that? Okay, so if you have an use the ankle issue. Okay, so if we have an ankle that gets it does not get a ton of blood flow, um, if if we can do really really high rep stuff, it forces blood to get to that area. Okay, if we're talking about like tibialis curls or, or just even calf raises, right? This the most absurd. Uh, bodybuilding movement that you can think of it like a calf raise you're in the machine and you're doing calf raises on a slant board or something some people will say that it's stupid but the way i see this is that now think about if i have someone who has minimal calf mobility like ankle mobility right the fastest way that i have seen an achilles lengthen and become more mobile is making them do calf raises on a slant board all the time calf raises with with tibialis curls or, or tibialis raises or or banded dorsiflexion drills so now they're getting this huge stretch when they're dorsiflexing on this calf if they're doing a calf raise and then they push up and then the achilles drops down below where their toes are and they push up what that does is it lengthens it's forcing their their body to lengthen the 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 muscle belly and the tendon which in turn will help them track with their knee better, which will make their knee more stable, their lower back and their shoulder more stable, all because they did a freaking calf raise. And it's like, that's one area where guys will be like, well, you don't want to do bodybuilding stuff. But it's like, dude, are you crazy? Yeah. Have you watched like, didn't you grow up? Like, if, like dude, here's a, prere a prerequisite to being in fitness, to being a strength coach. You should have been watching Pumping Iron when you were like 12 years old. Like that should be in your blood. And that's I think that's my one problem with like the functional crowd. There's no way those dudes were watching Pumping Iron when they were like 14, 15. And I know it sounds crazy, but it's like watch Arnold like the golden era of of bodybuilding. Before it got crazy, like Arnold, Lou, um Franco, Colombo, Frank Zane, all those guys. Watch how mobile they were. Watch them squat like 405 for sets of 15 with like perfect technique, like in bare feet even. It's like, dude, because they were doing compound movements, then they were doing different movements that were isolating joints Right. that led to them being more mobile. And it's there's, there's this thought that like all these guys, they could barely walk and stuff, and they were so immobile. But what's crazy, watch old videos of Frank Zane posing, dude, and, and showing off his hamstrings. Like, the dude could get his head in between his feet, and he had freaking 35-inch quads or whatever they were. You know, it's like, so the bodybuilding stuff pays off because it helps with recovery. People miss the implication. Yeah, like, and it what increases their stability. They just see the surface level of it. Yeah, they're like, not oh, no, how it, that's Arnold. Yeah, not how, like, with the calf raise example, how, hey – yeah, their calves may get bigger, and it may feel like, I don't know. Vanity. Yeah. But actually, no. If you break it down and think about it from this perspective, hey, the Achilles becomes more flexible. All of a sudden now, our base of joints ha helps every joint above Everything it. Everything above it. Yeah. Shoulders. Dude, it's the one thing. And if you if you ask Caitlin. So we. This we, is your wife, right? Yeah, Caitlin. my wife, Caitlin. <laughs> uh we got this leg press off Craigslist for like 300 bucks like three years ago. Um, you were so happy when you got that. Yeah, and they still want to get rid of it. Your quads still haven't got bigger. Shut up. They still <laughs> want to get rid of it. I get so mad. The only th My only argument is that I did a I did a uh, leg press at Body Zone, which is a Globo gym in our area. Lincoln had an ice hockey game for like two and a half hours. So the one during the break, I was like, I'm gonna of go course up. you would go. I'm going to go upstairs and do like leg press like five sets of 30. And it was a different leg press angle, and I was, like, destroyed. The reason why I'm telling you this is because the one machine I wish we had is an old classic, short, like, pads like on my shoulder. Squat, like, no, no. Well, like that. Like yeah. the hack squat, but as a calf machine. Cause that, oh, okay. What, so the one machine that we have for triceps. You already have, like huge calves because you walk on your, are huge, you yeah. walk on your tiptoes all the time <laughs> yeah. so they're just constantly peeing under <laughs> my dad always said that was a sign of uh slight sign of being uh autistic really <laughs> yeah he would say shit like that to me. <laughs> he just well you were the dumbest of his kids according <laughs> yeah, to you <laughs> uh yeah anyway so my whole story is that i've i've brought this up to caitlin 
that at body works, which was like the first gym I really trained hard at, I would do calf raises a lot. And I think that it helped me with my squats with, because I have longer legs. I just helped, I think it helped me with my mobility. Yeah, bigger calves, your yeah. hamstrings hit them quicker. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to go <laughs> That's as deep. true. I didn't think about that. <laughs> so the tricep machine that we have is actually from that first gym. And when they closed, I wasn't, I got to buy the tricep machine. I use that all the time. But I didn't have enough money at the time to buy the calf machine. And now I'm like, I've got to find that calf machine. But her her deal breaker is that if I buy the calf machine, we got to sell that leg press. So now I'm like, we can't sell Why the leg press. Why does everyone hate the leg press? I don't, I don't understand. Because they don't use it. They don't, they don't. They don't use it. They don't realize. But, but yeah, Jake's squat blew up because we made him do hack squats freaking twice a week. His squat did blow up. Yes. It went from him basically cleaning what he squatted to, to, to like back to our now it's like a yeah. a reasonable ratio. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Audience questions? Yeah, let's get to the audience questions. All right. Hold on. I got to zoom in here. Do cable machines help? Oh, geez. This is great. Yeah. Changes for days. Okay. Change. Hold on. That's not the whole question, though. Okay. That's just the um, – I was Changes wondering – Changes Bowie. That was the first CD I ever bought. <laughs> I was wondering if cable machine question mark workouts and leg presses could help with my overall strength oh, and if it could playing. transition into Olympic lifting. I'm talking about leg presses, hamstring curl, leg extensions, cable rows, tricep extensions, all of that leg extensions and think- hamstring curls, especially I'm pretty new to Olympic lifting and I haven't seen Olympic lifters utilizing any of these exercises into their workout go to China I'm sure the Chinese are yeah and Haley was just doing leg curls but okay so here would be my argument I don't believe leg presses transfer strength wise okay so like if I leg press a thousand pounds will my squat go up No. no but it does transfer knee health it can be drastically improve the, the 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 stability of your knee, which will lead to being able to handle the volume. I'm not saying that you should do leg presses when you're weightlifting all the time, but using other cable movements can drastically improve your strength and your structural integrity. And the other reason here is because of the strength cur- the the curve of uh, the mechanical curve. So if I'm doing a curl. You know, if I'm doing a curl with with a with a cable, the hardest part, depending on where the 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 angle is, will be at the top. I'm gonna have more tension at the top. Whereas if I'm just doing a dumbbell, the hardest part will be mid range. So one of the things you have to do is is basically find, and this goes back to again old school bodybuilding, breaking down positions of flexion and seeing is it mid range, is it is it end range, is it is it top range, and seeing where that weakness is. So. You know, with cables, there's a there's a lot of of uh, there's a lot of research, but there's also just a a lot of advantages to using it because it makes it a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging, and then you can throw bands on them and stuff, and it and it just. I, I think the most important thing here is 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 like not, you know, uh, people who who sort of speak negatively about bodybuilding, they'll they'll you're just throwing a tool out the out the window you have to realize there's a benefit to a tricep pushdown a tricep pushdown machine you can have 30 exercises on that one machine it's just like doing a back squat a back squat can turn into 150 exercises so it's like why throw it out there's always a benefit to it yeah that's what i was hearing from you it's like yeah you can use it it's probably not going to be your main focus because no, you're learning how to olympic lift yeah but there's nothing wrong with using it in your accessory movements and right. like there are clear benefits if done properly with a like a great example okay this is what I, now this is where i do think it can benefit directly you have somebody who presses out if you're somebody who presses out in weightlifting in a jerk or in i a know snatch. someone who did, did that you all the time (laughs) yeah so you get you get somebody to do let's say you're in a kneeling position and you're doing a cable extension here okay so you're actually locking out basically where you would be in in a split but you're kneeling so you have to use just your abs and your hips for stability so you're it's actually sort of like trunk control there right and then you're locking out overhead the way you would be uh in a split position so that will strengthen your triceps which should in turn Ideally, not always, but ideally, transfer over to helping you with the press. press I out. think that's real important, though. The point isn't that it's a tricep extension; it's the position it's done in. Yeah. To 
help everything start to coordinate together your yeah. trunk with your shoulders in the triceps yeah overhead who would win in a fight this is the biggest side thor you know big strong yeah. man or five matt frazier's oh five matt frazier's yeah i know easily that's the whole point of coordinated muscles, though, and co-contractions, right? Yeah, yeah. You can have the one big, strong one, but yeah, hey, let's but take it, multiple really actually ones. strong ones and yeah. twitch it, yeah. Yeah. All day, five Matt Frank. <laughs> Someone make a meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> if it doesn't exist already. Yeah. All right. This is from Jack Lee. Also, since you're big into theology, uh-oh, uh, I wonder the, what you think. A, the, hang on. There's a difference here. Okay. Theology is actually the study of, like, like religious studies is the study of religions. Theology is actually like being in the religion and and actually it's more like like if you if you're go to seminary, you're a theologist. Okay. So that there's I know the Wilco I, song theologians don't up. know nothing about my soul. I just need to point that out, but I'll go with the theology question. Okay. That's all. Jeff Tweedy's great. They're awesome live. Also, since you I forgot that guy's name was Jeff Tweedy. Yeah. Since you're big into theology, I wonder what you think of the Book of Mormon. My mind went to the South Park uh play, but I know I don't think that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Don't know if you heard of it, but you should give it a read. There's some pretty amazing concepts in there. That I like think it's play? a statement. The play? No. Or like the actual book. The Book of Mormon. So like my my senior thesis was on the Book of Mormon. Was it? Yeah. Uh oh. It was sixty five pages of I uh, didn't know you actually got a degree, Dane. I, I always love making that joke to everyone. You would always say, I studied. Not okay. <laughs> so so the so Mormons have I think they have it's either two or three main books out like there's other books that they use outside the book of mormon and so it's similar to to judaism and i studied the book of mormon um i did i can't think of the the second book it's basically like i actually think it might be it's like about disciplines and stuff and, and other lessons and then i essentially studied um more so studied joseph smith and his parents uh, their history with the Anabaptist, uh, they have an Anabaptist background, uh, which Anabaptist is, is sort of like this um, this movement in in Germany, mainly in Germany, uh, when there was a split and and from the uh, essentially from the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church, when it all split up, uh, they're a Protestant sect. Like, think about. Um, Amish, Mennonites, brethren, this these are like the Anabaptist revolution or very local to this area yeah, too. And and actually, ironically, Joseph Smith's mother's it's like mother's grandmother lived at Ephrata Cloister for a little bit. Okay. So I studied a lot of Smith's um familial impact on him and uh in even his dad was a soothsayer, um and into like stuff like that. So I studied a lot of that. And then I studied his uh, moves from the, uh, you know, um, you know, from New York, Elmira, essentially in New York. And then, and then to uh, Kirtland, Ohio, and then to um, Illinois where he, where he passed away. And then as uh, the faith sort of moved West, I studied all that. So I, I know it, I grew up, Ironically, in this area, we actually have a fair amount of Mormons. My neighbors were Mormon growing up. I trained Mormon uh, discus throwers, uh, Nick Aranius. So, like, I, I have a decent understanding. And, and, again, it was my senior thesis. Cool. Yeah. Sorry for that. No, that was a question. That's good. Jack Lee will appreciate that we respond. you Thanks, respond Jack. to that. Yeah. Book of Mormon. Like I said, I thought of the South Park thing. I, I, I mean no disrespect, but th like I just I go to silly things. Remember, comment in the subreddit, comment on our YouTube videos, and what about the Discord? Can we talk about? That? Oh yeah, we gotta we, we gotta get the Discord. Yeah, we gotta do. So, we gotta make it roll. We have it. Right? We yeah. have it, but we haven't done anything. Yeah, yet. we gotta do something. So we are it. gonna try and get a Discord going. So comment down below. Send us your questions. You can email us, support at Garage Strength, and we'll answer some of your questions. Until next time, peace. Later.